Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics in the shed, gearing up for a quick session tomorrow morning before work. Basically, I'm gonna get out there and take you guys fishing with Ned. So we're gonna throw the kayak in and spend an hour or two fishing the Ned rig in the salt water, and I'm gonna give you five tips for fishing the Ned rig in the salt. So gearing up nice and simple, I've just got a tray with some TT Ned Locks and Ned Locks EWG jig heads, a few of my favorite Ned rig plastics, some Procure scent, and some 10 pound platypus hard armor leader. So we'll gear up a few combos now and then join me in the morning out on the water, fish on, fishing with Ned. Cheers. All right, so tip number one when fishing the Ned Rig system for me would be to slow things down. So with your paddle tails or curtails, you might fish fairly rapidly and, and you can fish quick with the Ned Rig if you're twitching it over the top of weed and flats and that sort of thing. But generally I'm fishing the Ned Rig because the bite is tough or the tides are junk. Like today I've got junk tides. I've got a point eight low and a 1.6 high. So basically I've only got 80 centimeters of water movement for the tide. We're here at the end of the run out, start of the run in, and I'm basically fishing up into a drain. So I don't wanna be fishing fast. These little creatures that I'm representing, you know, I'm up in the drain, I've got a 2.75 inch TRD bugs on there. So I'm representing, you know, a little squid or a crab or a prawn or a tiny bait fish or whatever. And I don't wanna be ripping it around all over the place. So I'm just fishing nice and slow. And generally I throw in lots of twitches and hops and that sort of thing as well. So probably my first tip with the Ned Rig is you're generally not just winding it back in or fishing with a fast retrieve. You're generally fishing it slower and you're generally fishing it with a few twitches and hops and shakes and that sort of thing just to try and work out what the fish want on the day and try and stir up a bite even when the bite is tough. Oh, there we go. He just drilled that. Not a big fish, but he's, um, yeah, he certainly whacked that. Just a little brimbo. Oh, that's on that Z-Man 2.75 inch TRD bugs. So, you know, people say to me, oh, it's a bit of a bulky little profile, but have a look at that guy. He's not a giant brim, but he has inhaled that. There we go. So he'd be a legal fish if you're fishing a comp. But he has scoffed that. Absolutely inhaled that 2.75 inch TRD bugs. Nice little brimbo. See you, buddy. He's away. So that would bring me, I guess, to, you know, tip one, we said fish it nice and slow and shaky and twitchy. We're, we're representing creatures and that sort of thing. The other thing, probably tip number two, would be fish it near structure. So... These little creatures, you know, two and a half inch grubs and two and a half inch slim swims, 2.75 inch TRD bugs, 2.5 inch TRD crawls, they're little critters, little creature things, you know, representing prawns and crabs and whatever. So they're not gonna be out there in the middle of nowhere because they're gonna get eaten. They wanna try and find some sort of structure to hide in and live around. So you may look here and go, where's your structure, mate? That's just water out there. But I'm actually in a little drain. It's like a blind gutter goes up in here. So even though I've got a fair bit of low tide, like a 0.8 low, it's not bad for sitting in this drain because it's gonna hold a bit of water in here, the bait's gonna hold in here, and hopefully the fish come in. So I like to fish the Ned Rig around structure because that's where these little creatures will be. So it doesn't have to be hardcore structure. It can be, it can be rock walls, it can be timber and mangrove edges and that sort of thing, or it can be as simple as weed beds, channel edges, you know, things that where these creatures would be hiding, the drop-offs of muddy banks and all that sort of thing. So number two, I'd say, is think about the structure that you're fishing like. It can just be broken rubble bottom or whatever it might be. The only exception where I'd probably fish the Ned Rig in more open water is if I'm fishing a yabby bed. And in that case, I'd probably run that greasy prawn colour with an orange ooh, ooh, with an orange Ned Lock's head. And that represents a yabby with eggs. So... That's the only time, and then your structure in that case is all the little yabby holes and stuff that the critters are living in. 
but yeah find the structure find the fish definitely so when you're fishing these guys you know we're fishing slow we're targeting an area and we're yeah we're really working that structure over so i'm i'm actually sitting on one side of the drain here and i'm flicking across to the other edge of the drain it's not super deep you know it's only probably goes from half a meter of water to maybe a meter of water in the drain but that's enough to hold fish hold bait hold fish and it's it's good structure to fish with the ned rig yep there we go fish on rimbo again i think oh no pikey that is a big pike Unfortunately, when we're fishing the shallows in winter, we do come across a few of these guys. The yellowtail pike, excellent bait if you want to chop one up for bait or troll it for bait or whatever. Great bait. He has grabbed that. They have a lot of teeth on them, those critters. So it's good to be fishing with 10 times tough Z-Man when there's yellowtail pike around, that's for sure. He actually tapped that. I felt him tap it and then he came back again. Finished it off. Alrighty, tip number three when fishing the Ned Rig. We are generally fishing slower, as we've spoken about. So when we're fishing slower, we really want that fish to think that our presentation's real. We want them to hang on to it and we really want them to hit it more aggressively. So I will scent up fairly regularly when I'm fishing the Ned Rig, get that scent all over those little appendages and stuff. So yeah, I, I will generally fish, you know, this guy could be a, a yabby or prawn nipper, that sort of thing. So I'll fish saltwater yabby nipper. If I go to the slim swims or more paddle tail, then I might go to sardine pilchard. But yeah, it's good to mix it up and see what they want. I generally carry at least two different flavors with me just to mix things up. But yeah, scenting up I find because I'm fishing slower sometimes the fish have got you know they've got a bit longer to have a look at it so sometimes you'll you'll watch your line and your lure will be sinking back down you'll see them they'll, they'll sort of tap it and then they'll just annihilate it and then away you go they'll get it right down hang on to it a bit longer give you time to set the hook so yeah we're we're fishing slow covering the structure so you want to be centered up all right, I am right up in the drain here now. I don't know if you can see. There's quite a amount of water in amongst these bits of weed that are almost on the surface. So it's patches of weed and patches of deeper water, which are going to hold flatties and other fish, hopefully. I'm starting to catch a bit too much weed on this guy now as I go through those towers of weed. So tip number four with the Ned Rig would be don't forget your weedless options as well. The weedless options will allow me to take that same presentation and fish all of these pockets in the weed, these little deep holes hidden in amongst the weed where the fish like to hide. So basically I've got a Nedlox EWG, so weedless. And you can see there, that plastic will sit up in there. I'm not going to catch the weed. So it allows me to rip it right in through this stuff here and still catch a fish. The fish being 10 times tough, Z-Man Elastec, super soft and flexible, clears really easy when the fish hits it. So that's a that'll still allow me to fish that Ned Rig, that stand-up presentation. Don't forget, out of the packet, get your 2.75 inch TRD bugs and pop those claws apart so you get maximum action. And now I can pretty much float around in this weed, just work my way in around, look for the deeper pockets and just fish those pockets with this weedless head I can throw it over weed into pockets, no stress, I'm not going to catch the weed. So it allows me to fish and not worry about catching weed, focus on hitting the right spots and catching a fish. So we'll send that guy up and we'll send him into a few pockets. Yep. Oh, no pikey, no, come on, why are you? Rimbo, 
he nailed that as soon as it hit the water. He did say it must have been on some bait. So on that edge there, I saw a little bit of bait flicking, flicked it in where the bait was, and this guy must have been on the bait because he just absolutely drilled it. He's not a bad brim. Good fun on the light gear. Yeah, good fun on light gear, that guy. And he scoffed that. So that's the one to three kilo seven foot black mamba. ITX 1000, six pound Bionic X9. And I've got 10 pound hard armor supple lead on there. So not a monster, but hey, good fun. Put a bend in the rod. And that's that 2.75 inch TRD bugs in one of my favorite colors. Oops, sorry, buddy. One of my favorite colors, hot snakes, which is a UV reactive color. Very, very cool color. A bit glary out here this morning. The weather's not real good, but we're just going to fish for an hour. I just wanted to give you five tips for fishing the Ned Rig and um, see if we could whack a couple, which we have, so it's been good. We've got a bit of bait bit of bait playing over here so I'll make a cast over here I'm sitting on the weed edge here so you might be able to see down beside me I'm actually sitting on the weed edge of this drain fishing back into the drain and on the other side of the drain it's only about oh, 10 meters wide and it's just a blind gutter blind drain that goes up onto the flats so as the tide comes in which we've just got the start of the run in now the bait and the fish will be pushing up onto the flats using this drain as a bit of a highway to get up there. So what I'll often do is I'll fish out around the mouth of the drain more and gradually work my way back up into there. Then I'll paddle along the edge, come back out and I'll drift back up into the drain again. And the good thing about a drain like this on an incoming tide is that it's constantly restocking with bait and fish as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that followed that in for a little way then. Followed in for a little way and then belted. Have a look at that thing. Everything eats a net rig. <laughs> Settle down, buddy. He's not the flat guy we're after, but have a look at that bloke. Seriously, what a weapon. <laughs> the old flounder, the soul. So... It's all about soul. Have a look at that guy. He is fired up. Winter time. I don't know whether it's spawning time for these guys or they move into the system or whatever it might be. But we often get them firing up in here in the winter time. Look at that guy. My wife thinks they're cute, so I'm not allowed to eat them. See you, buddy. <laughs> what a cool fish. Okay, tip number five, Ned Rig. Go light to get the bite. So the Ned Rig system is a finesse technique. It's jig head weights are generally around that 1 15th ounce to 1 5th ounce commonly. So for me, when I'm up on the flats and shallows and drains like this, I'll fish a 1 15th ounce or a 1 10th ounce. When I fish the edges and drop offs, I'll change it up to a 1 sixth ounce or a one fifth ounce and we're fishing finesse plastics light jig heads so the key is we want to fish light finesse combos so that we can cast them effectively so that we can work the lure effectively and feel it and you know it's awesome fun when you hook a fish and and some big fish eat the ned rig that's for sure you know i've got a few brim and stuff today but i've caught some cracker flatties i've got an 80 centimeter flatty on the ned rig and a bunch of other fish so we're going light we're fishing one to three kilo or two to four kilo rods small spin reels light braid light leaders so in this case here i'm fishing a this is my go-to combo for the ned rig it's a black mamba tt rods black mamba one to three 1000 itx six pound braid and bionic x9 10 pound hard armor leader my other combos i've got here when i step up to the one sixth, one fifth and that especially. Then I'll go to two to four kilo. So I've got a couple of other rods here. Two to four kilo TT Rods Black Mamba, two to four kilo Akuma Saros. And on those, I've got one of my favorite reels, which is the Akuma Apixor XT in a 20 size. So 
if you're looking for a reel that's like just ridiculous value for money and i've had those now for probably five years and they're still going strong even fishing the yak whoa follower there so yeah that seros uh if uh pixel 20 is excellent and i've got sort of six pound eight pound braid on there and i still fish a 10 pound leader mainly because there's a plenty of flathead in the system that i'm fishing so i'm just as likely to get a flathead as i am a brim if you're in a system where it's predominantly brim and you want to go lighter you know you can drop to that eight pound six pound four pound whatever you need to do to get the fish to eat but i like i like a 10 pound leader because of that like that 80 centimeter flatty that i got i don't i'd be just stressing too much on four pound that's for sure so that's tip number five just to keep the whole combo nice and light because we are finesse fishing and we really want to feel what's going on we want to feel what the lure is doing what sort of structure it's bumping so that we can drive it more effectively you know if i'm in weed i might fish it and work it a bit higher and i can feel it catching in the weed if i'm on more of a rubble bottom i might you know let it sit a bit longer on the bottom and just attract the fish to the lure so yeah it's good to read the bottom feel the bottom with that light combo you may have noticed me fanning casts around the yak which is which is what i'll generally do from sit from this seated position sitting in the yak here i can cover a lot of water like i can fish all that way around there so without moving the kayak i've got a large area to fish so i, I can sit myself from the middle of the gutter and fish both sides i can sit on one side of the gutter and fan right across the gutter the key thing is just to you know don't just sit in the one spot and cast in the same spot over and over again you know fan your casts around cover plenty of water see if you can find where the fish are holding and often with things like you know fish like brim and that sort of thing you you might start to go oh they're in the middle of the drain or all oh, right they're right on the edge and that sort of thing so by fanning your casts around you're covering water and you're kind of also mapping out where the fish are like one side of the drain might hold more fish than the other you know it might be the wind blowing side there's bait there's ox more oxygenated water whatever it might be just by fanning those casts around you, you'll soon find like crack a bit of a pattern of where the fish are at times oh yeah there we go yep that was a nice solid take oh that's a cranky fish maybe just a brimbo again Yeah. The Brimbos are absolutely loving the TRD bugs this morning. That's another decent fish. You know, five of them. Five of them in your tournament bag, you'd be happy enough for starters. It's a you know nice chunk of brim. Again, you know, no problem in hailing that 2.75 inch TRD bugs. Hot snakes colour cracker of a color right? really good naturally looking color but it but it is uv reactive which is great whoa, whoa, there you go fair chunk of brim back in the water another victim of the trd bugs you'll quite often hear me refer to this sort of tide as a junk tide because it is the low is not low enough to really fish some of my favorite edges and the high tide's not really high enough to get up and fish at a lot of the flats that i fish so yeah it's a bit of a junk tide no run no fun yeah not too high a low too low a high so you just got to think about where you're fishing when you're fishing those tides like this spot that i'm fishing in right now is a perfect spot on junk tides just to find a big drain that feeds a flat because the fish are still going to be thinking about going up on the flat and they're going to come and sit in this drain there's it's always going to hold bait and stuff in the drain so drains um areas where you know you've got a deep section beside a flat that sort of thing where you know the fish will go i oh, can't really get on the flat but i'll hold off the edge or whatever today so yeah I, an area like this is cool because you can see here like this weed would normally be out of the water at low tide but I've still got a defined edge because I've got the weed edge here to fish from. 
So I still know where my edge is and I'm fishing back into a drain that, you know, potentially on a, on a very low low may not have enough water to fish it. And on a big high, the water's gone, it's all over the flats. So it's almost like this drain is kind of just a holding area for fish on this sort of tide. You know, it's, they, they can't really get up on the flats, well, not until a fair bit into the tide. And they're, um, and the edges aren't really defined. So, you know, they'll come and sit in this drain and feed on the bait. So just have a think about your tides. You know, if you've got a really low low, it often brings out some really defined channel edges that you can fish. If you've got a big high, it often allows you to get right up in the mangroves and on the flats and that sort of thing. When you've got those hit and miss sort of tides like this one, yeah, just think about what water is sitting in the area that you're fishing, what structures around you, and you know, why would the fish be in that area when the tides don't have a lot of movement? All right, you can almost bet money on the fact that when your GoPro goes beep, 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 I'm flat, that you're gonna catch another fish. So just as the GoPro went flat, we got this nice brim. He's a goodie. Again, nailed that 2.75 inch Tower D bugs. Hooked nice in the corner of the jaw there on that size one. And that's the one tenth ounce, which I commonly fish in this sort of half meter to meter of water. There is a one fifteenth for those of you that like to fish lighter again. Oh, see you buddy. So there we go, folks. A nice little session out on the water fishing the Ned Rig and five tips that hopefully help you get hooked up next time you're out on the water fishing the Ned Rig in the salt. So we're out for about an hour or so before work. I've uh, got a handful of brim, a big yellowtail pike, and also a nice flounder. We didn't get that flatty that we we're after, but that's a pretty good excuse to get out here and, and have another crack later in the week. So all the best with the fishing. We'll see you out there on the water. Fish on.